Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponderon Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a vicious storm system bringing potent winds, huge hail, and a strong tornado risk. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is your Sunday, March the 20th update. And what we're taking a look at here is the overall uh, 500 millibar height wind speed. And I'm pointing this out because this is about 15,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And this huge trough is going to be the beginnings of the setup where the, we're going to be creating the severe weather threat over the next several days. So you have this massive trough that's going to be diving down here and digging all the way down here in the Baja of California. And once it hits parts of Texas, it actually goes neutrally tilted. But once it gets into central Texas, it actually goes negative tilt. And negative tilt is typically your most highest threat for you know, highest updraft potential and the most severe weather and creating supercell towering thunderstorms. And just to the east and southeast of there, that is where your main instability is gonna be flying. So you can see these winds are gonna be traveling anywhere from 70 to 90 knots from the southwest, and that's about 80 to 100 miles an hour, about 15,000 feet up in the atmosphere. At the same time, if we look at the 850 millibars, now that's about 5,000 feet. So, and those winds are gonna be coming from the south-southeast trajectory. And but so yeah, so once we get into your kind of your afternoon hours, three, six, nine o'clock in the evening time frame on Monday, look at all that strong shear that's going to be taking place at the lower levels, about five thousand feet of around anywhere from kind of you know fifty to to seventy knots. So those winds are going to be creating that shear, and that's going to be creating the ro rotation and the stronger updrafts to be creating those supercell towering thunderstorms and another thing we look at as well are the dew points so this is going to be a yet another dry line cold front setup so as we get into your monday afternoon time frame four five six o'clock in the afternoon you can see where the dry line is going to be out here in west texas but out ahead of it there's the warm sector and so typically you need about 55 degrees dew point to start to kind of moisten up the atmosphere but so it's going to have plenty of juice to fuel these thunderstorms because your dew points are you know in the lower 60s if not the middle to upper 60s once you get into central texas into uh, south texas into the afternoon hours on monday and another thing we look at is your cape values your convective available potential energy of the atmosphere that's kind of how much fuel you're going to have to fuel these thunderstorms yeah, typically kind of the minimum thresholds are right around about a thousand uh, Cape values, but you can see this is about two to three times that guys. So there's plenty of fuel once we hit into central and portions of South Texas. Some of these areas are over 3000. So that's three times the normal rate that you would need the fuel towering thunderstorms and those strong updrafts. So that's the main concern with these systems. It's gonna have a lot of lift up in the atmosphere. And the same time, the atmosphere is gonna be rotating as well. And so if we look at the significant tornado parameters, yeah, these some of these parameters from three to nine o'clock in the afternoon are hitting really high. So this is a dangerous setup uh, that could unfold into the mo Monday afternoon hours into portions of North Texas, especially Central Texas and South Texas and getting into parts of East Texas. But some of these parameters are hitting almost off the chart here. So this is deeply concerning that a lot of these dynamics are really coming together. So if we take a look at a sounding, if we kind of zoom in, let's take a look at the top right hand corner. This is called the hodograph. Uh, so as it lifts up in the atmosphere from zero to one kilometer, it kind of has like that meat hook type shape. That's, that's, a, that's an indicative of the air is gonna be rotating in the upper levels. And no question, this is a, a tornadic uh, a sounding because what we kind of take a look at is your, is your Cape values up out here in the left-hand corner of the screen. All you typically need is about a thousand and that's almost double uh, the Cape values. 
And then we also look at the sin. That is your cap up in the atmosphere, but kind of the warm nose aloft. You actually see there actually isn't a warm nose. So, you, so the, the green is your dew point. The red is your temperature. They're about the same as you lift up in the atmosphere. The further you go up in the atmosphere, they're typically touching each other. So that is a dangerous sounding. And you essentially have little to no cap, nothing to stop the air continue, to continue to rise. And also we look at the, uh, the EHI index, the minimum thresholds, typically about 200. This is 600 guys. Again, three times the normal rate that you would need to create, you know, a tornado and so these updrafts are going to be really strong and yes this particular sounding is as a pds type tornado sounding which is indicative of an ef2 type tornado or stronger so that is the deep concern and there's numerous of these soundings across uh central and east texas as we get into in south texas into uh monday afternoon and if we take a look at the maximum updrafts of what we could be looking at and so some of the higher the numbers, that's the, the higher, uh, greater prob probability of seeing an updraft. And it's definitely concerning. Not only do you see these updrafts, but they tend to be training. So this is an indication, not only we could be looking at strong tornadoes, but we could be looking at a strong tornado that could be on the ground for an extended period of time. So this is definitely deeply concerning because we have a lot of parameters. They're coming together to be a, a concerning event as we get into Monday afternoon. And this is why the Storm Prediction Center has actually increased and, and uh, expanded the enhanced risk to include further out west in portions of Houston, the Houston Metroplex into Austin, back into uh, Waco, into the clean area with their enhanced risk. And they have a slight risk for severe weather all the way down extended into San Antonio into the dallas fort worth area but if we highlight the risk i mean the risk are huge guys i mean these hatched areas that is your supercell activity of could be looking at some of those uh stronger you know giant type huge hailstones of two inches in diameter or greater that can do some significant damage to your cars and your home and everything in its path in and around the Austin area, into the Waco area, back into Colleen, into Round Rock, as well as into Temple. Those are your our greatest areas of concern right now for your larger two inch diameter hail. But even large hailstones in and around the Houston Metroplex, down into Austin, and as well as in Colleen, where they do have that you know enhanced risk for uh, supercell activity. But even down into San Antonio and extending further to the, further into Dallas, into Fort Worth, and back into the, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, you're definitely not out of the question to seeing some of those stronger hailstones as we get into Monday afternoon and the Monday evening time frame. But a, the greatest concern is your hatched risk for strong tornadoes. So I showed you that sounding, and this is a huge area, guys, extending from the Houston Metroplex to Pasadena, up here to Waco, to College Station, all the way down here to essentially almost to the border into Sugarland area, where could see some of those strong EF2 type tornadoes. So yeah, I showed you the, uh, you know, the significant tornado parameters. Those are hitting really high levels. So that's where the Storm Prediction Center feels more confident in expanding this hatched risk for a, a greater probability of seeing those long track type tornadoes as well but even into san antonio down into austin all the way down into beaumont and uh even into lake charles area up into the dallas Fort Worth area you're still under the gun and could see uh, an isolated tornado threat is definitely not out of the question so you can see basically from central to north texas to east texas and to portions of louisiana on the day on monday you could be looking at a potential tornado uh, in and around your area. So if we take a snapshot of what the radar could potentially look like around three, four, five o'clock in the afternoon, this is definitely concerning. So you get these little isolated bubblers down here in the south. So what you're trying to look for, if you've got anything, you know, obviously if the sun comes out in this type, in this type of atmosphere on the day on Monday, that is not a good thing, guys. You do not want to see the sun on a day like Monday because that's just going to destabilize the atmosphere quickly and these towering supercell thunderstorms will form. And another thing you want to look at, especially down the coast, 
as these as this rain activity starts to form if this is able to more or less kind of congeal if this is able to kind of create a, a kind of a solid wall that would somewhat like an, inhibit the uh, storm development and potential updrafts but as long as these things stay kind of more or less isolated in type nature and has these like little bubblers or a little popcorn type variety that is typically not what you want to see so you don't want to see the sun and you don't want to see you know these little isolated popcorn type variety uh cells that kind of pop up because those are just going to add insult to injury and create those towering thunderstorms but yeah we could be looking at right around four or five six o'clock these very strong dynamic supercell thunderstorms that could be dumping some significant hail and a strong tornado risk by then with actually a pretty much a heavier rain threat over uh, central and north Texas and getting into Oklahoma, I think where it's just gonna be all rain as well as into uh, Arkansas. So as this system kind of continues to move through uh, in portions of the Southeast into the overnight hours and about your you know noon time frame on Tuesday, yeah, it's still, it's very concerning with these supercell thunderstorms as these continue to race across. That will be in Shreveport by then. They'll be in portions of Lake Charles, getting into Arkansas, portions of Mississippi and uh, Western uh, Tennessee by then. And yes, the dew points are still high. I mean, it's even probably even higher than what you're gonna see in Texas, right around 65, almost close to 70 degree dew points. Again, once it hits portions of Louisiana and portions of Mississippi, taps into these dew points atmosphere, that is another concern for supercell uh, tornado risk. And these tornado risks is, are hitting all high cylinder as well. And some of these areas even could be a little bit more significant than what you could be looking in Texas. So this is a dangerous back-to-back -back setup with you know high you know in, enhanced to moderate risk days on you know monday and tuesday time frames with significant tornado parameters hitting really high and that's why the storm prediction center feels confident right now to put out a moderate risk even this far ahead three days out so if you live in the new orleans area into baton rouge into jackson down here into lafayette man those are the areas that are going to be under the gun to seeing that strong tornado risk very large hail and some powerful winds all the way down into you know portions of baton rouge into jackson into hattiesburg into clinton as well as uh, pearl mississippi here but even as far south as new orleans and going into gulfport this is a huge area from essentially you know moving out of houston then all you know going into portions of mobile as we get in through the you know the daytime hours on tuesday so this is a very dangerous uh setup moving across from portions of texas and entering the southeast as we get into your Tuesday time frame, but there's also a heavy rain threat with this. They need all the rain they can get in Texas, but a lot of this is gonna be coming too fast, too too much, and they actually have a moderate risk for flash flooding in and around portions of the Houston Metroplex extending all the way into Shreveport with some you know very heavy convective training thunderstorms. Some of these areas could pick up three to five inches is definitely not out of the question, but they still have a slight risk from Houston to Dallas, all the way extending to almost to Little Rock, Arkansas, but then just a heavier rain, like to moderate rain into, uh, you know, as we get towards Abilene, extending into Oklahoma City area, where they're expecting, you know, one to two inches of, of rain into Oklahoma, as well as uh, in portions of Arkansas. And that risk just extends the day on Tuesday, you know, with that moderate risk for flash flooding in and around the Jackson, uh, heading into the Birmingham, Alabama area. But you could still see some, you know, heavier flash flooding from New Orleans all the way up into portions of Kentucky with this very dynamic system uh, moving across. And as we get into your Wednesday time frame, that just continues to be off the east, you know, head further off into the east. So now it should be over portions of the Florida Panhandle, portions of Georgia getting into uh, you know entering south carolina into north carolina and entering parts of virginia and then as these continue to press and we get that daytime heating that instability and that upper level you know a low level jet moves moves through by the time we get into your wednesday time frame the 23rd they should be aligned 
right along the east coast and they still have that slight risk well that this risk would probably get bumped up as well because that same dynamics will be over uh, portions of Jacksonville getting into Charlotte all the way into Virginia Beach into Raleigh uh, into Norfolk uh, Virginia so those areas will be the highest susceptible to seeing all three modes of severe weather as we get into the daytime hours on your Wednesday time frame but it's gonna be a lot it's pretty windy as that at behind that cold front there's gonna be a very windy setup if you live in the central and, and southern plains as well as the southeast over the next several days really from monday tuesday wednesday on the back side with some stronger winds 40 to 50 mile per hour so i, I would imagine there's going to be numerous uh wind advisories that are going to be uh you know uh, impacting for these areas but here's your rain threat so you've got some those heavier rains where i showed you the the slight and moderate risk for flash flooding in and around central and east texas and to louisiana and arkansas mississippi and alabama and portions of Western and uh, Tennessee, as well as Kentucky. We still have that rain coming in off the Pacific Northwest, fairly dry in California and much of the desert Southwest. We do have snow that's gonna be flying just to the Northwest of there in the Intermountain West. Uh, but most of the most of the central and eastern two thirds should be mostly all rain. But there is going to be some snow associated with it from this particular setup just for the northwest of there. So we could be looking at a dusting or two in and around the Texas Panhandle. But the more significant snows are going to be in the Rockies and, and then heading farther to the north, where some cold air is going to be intruding into the into the uh, pattern. But uh, yeah, the main setup and the main risk associated this week is going to be your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame with that uh, severe weather threat. So my plan is to do another full update uh, tomorrow morning and then I'll be live, uh, you know, sometime two, three o'clock Monday afternoon and I'll be live here doing live updates, traveling, you know, with these storms on Monday, Tuesday, as well as Wednesday traversing and keeping you ahead of the storm. You know right here so definitely stay tuned for that so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video and definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel catch the latest update where i protect you for and after the storm